Hi there, it's Jeff. Are you sick of using clamps to hold down your material to your workbench, or even sometimes those clamps get in the way? I know I have that problem. Well, I've come up with a solution to solve that, and that's making these simple, cheap, hold down clamps using a vacuum pump. So they're vacuum clamps. I've looked around at these and actually I looked into buying uh, a professional setup for these and they were really, really expensive. So I've come up with a way to make this uh, really cheaply uh, using some basic materials. And my ones are super low and they clamp down onto your workbench using these micro jig clamps that are expensive. Some rubber, round rubber seal and a little cheap to run vacuum pump. So keep watching and I'll show you how to make this and how you, how you can use it in your workshop. Okay, I start off with my piece of board and this can be whatever size you want to make it. I'm going to make a 20 millimeter uh, perimeter right round. This is going to be the uh, outline of my router bit. Now the router bit needs to suit your rubber seal that you're going to use. And I've just made a little spacer block here uh, for setting up my um, framework here that I'm going to run my trimmer. Uh, these are going to be the guides that I'm going to run my trimmer right round with to make a little trench for my rubber seal to sit in. This is an important part, just getting this set up right so um, your base of your trimmer can actually run right around nice and neatly. And it's just a matter of dropping it in. And I did it in two passes. I didn't want to go the full depth at once because uh, I think the depth was around about four millimeters, which isn't a lot, but uh, I just wanted to do it in two passes. And this material that I am using this PVC is actually quite soft, so, uh, but you might be using something that's a little bit harder. And uh, yeah, just going around that um, perimeter of the jig nice and slowly and carefully, and you'll get a nice result. It'll just be a nice uh, square cut for your rubber seal to sit in once it's finished. Here we go again now on the second pass. And uh, this time I've decided to connect my vacuum, which I should have done in the first one, because it's uh, quite messy with these um, fine shavings. But yeah, just keeping it nice and steady and along that um, those guides and uh, come up with a nice result. After that, you just need to check your rubber seal, make sure it can um, tuck into that groove uh, nice and tightly to form a, a really good seal. And it's just a matter of picking the right router bit to suit your rubber seal. In my case, I use six millimeter rubber, uh, round rubber tubing, and uh, the router bit was actually 4.73 millimeters. Next step here is to trench out that middle section and I've just picked the widest router bit that I had. It's around about three quarter of an inch, 19 millimeters. And again, I've set up a little block here to set up my framework. I've had to move it all again. And uh, this bit will start uh, around about quarter of an inch, six millimeters from my previous um, trench that I did. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you have enough um, material there so your, your rubber seal Will sit into you'll you'll see that once it's pulled off and you'll get the idea but again um, just moving this along just doing the outside pass first and then I will just move the, the trimmer up and down just to from the right side to the left um, to get rid of the middle material um, this could be done really easily obviously with a CNC but um, yeah if you just take your time and just move from one side to the other it is achievable.
Here I'm just running the trimmer with a small round over bit just to round over those top edges. Next step I'm going to router the, um, this dovetail profile which is for the uh, micro jig clamps that I'm going to be using for this. Uh, this is again optional but um, I just happen to have these clamps and I wanted to use this system so I can clamp it flat onto my bench. So I ran a um, what we call a relief cut on the um, table saw, just ran two passes just to get a little bit of a, a slot in there so it's less work on the router just when I do that pass. And you'll see once I remove the router here, the profile that's uh, finished. Next step is to mark and drill the holes for the vacuum line to go into the board. And I've used a long series drill bit here. It's a bit over a quarter of an inch, somewhere around about that size. And uh, yeah, just making sure that's clamped nice and um, straight, level. And um, ran that through. And then I will be drilling the, the hole on the top with the uh, same drill bit. So it forms a tunnel. And then I'll be putting on a fitting for that. Next step here is to actually fit the rubber seal in and just start in the middle, tuck it all in so it's nice and even along the top. Because uh, what I find if you don't tuck it in properly, you'll have, you'll, you'll, if you, when you look at the rubber on the top, you'll get like waves and you just want it nice and flat. But just start in the middle, work your way around and then measure um, where you're going to cut it. Leave a little bit extra and then uh, tuck it in. Now, in regards to uh, the vacuum setup for for this, and which is basically going to be doing the job for us, I'm going to be um, basing this and using a little vacuum pump. But there is another option that you can do, and I, I experimented with this, and that is one of these. It's basically a, a Venturi generator, vacuum generator, and uh, you can buy these on on eBay or Amazon or so on, and uh, these work using your compressor. You just plug your compressor in or fitting, you just put a fitting on it at the tap. I fitted a gauge on it as well. It's got a little muffler. Um, and yeah, you can actually 
this converts your compressed air into vacuum coming in, vacuum coming out here. Um, I did experiment with this and it does work 100% but for me I've got an old uh, oldish sort of compressor and uh, I found that it had to keep kicking on regularly because um, with this setup it's like having a if you can think of it a slow leak because air has to escape and it comes out through this muffler so it's like having a slow leak and then eventually the air drops in your compressor and has to keep kicking on and like I said uh, my compressor sort of um, wasn't keeping up too well with it it was working but I found that it had to kick on every you know too often you know to keep this going uh, also um, I thought of the cost as well because um, the cost of running the compressor regularly kicking on uh, I did some calculations and it works on around about seven and a half amps whereas this little pump here continually running will only run on 1.1 amps that's under load so you do the maths this this does work well uh, a lot, lot cheaper as well but if you've got a big compressor at home and you wouldn't feel that loss of um, air then you know you can get one of these quite cheap um, cheaply and you can use this setup as well Okay, hope you enjoyed that little bit of a video showing how to make this and it is quite simple to use although you need a little bit of experience on uh, the router using a router. If you have a CNC, well happy days. Uh, unfortunately I don't have one so I've got to do everything by hand. But you can see using some uh, jig or setting yourself up uh, on the bench just using some uh, guides to run your little trimmer on, it's achievable. I just want to run through a few things with you. Uh, and some things that I experimented on too when uh, making this um, this vacuum clamp. Number one was the material I used. Um, I had a bit of this leftover board and it's actually uh, what we call PVC board. Uh, it's mainly used uh, in Australia anyway on uh, outdoor kitchens, cabinets for example, alfresco sort of stuff um, because it's, it's made up of PVC so you can leave it out in the weather it just won't rot. So. Um, it's, it's basically you know, real tight and it's, it's a compact type of uh, material rather than um, like your, your melamine or, or, your, or, or your MDF. Now I did experiment using um, those two materials just mentioned, MDF and uh, melamine. And if that is readily available to you and you want to, to make them out of that, by all means you can um, actually make them out of that, but anything that you do router, um, you do need to seal and I had problems with this hole set up from the inside here I wanted to set mine up like this instead of underneath because obviously I want this to sit flat on the bench so I had to come through the side and drill down and that tunnel there that's been drilled that would would need to be sealed uh, if you're using your manufactured boards because that the, the vacuum will escape uh, using those so I used a bit of uh, PVC glue mixed with the water and that sort of worked, especially on the surfaces. By the way, this routed uh, inlay here that I did do is optional. Um, you could get away with not doing that. You just got to make sure that you leave an edge after your seal there. 
uh, when you do do your router here because you don't have to router that whole section there you could do actually a grid pattern if you wanted to but it, it does help with vacuum suction having it more more area to suck so um, I would say that if you are going to do this sort of thing you, you would sort of need a little bit more experience using uh, a router or a trimmer but like I said if you did have a, a CNC well happy days um, the other thing um, I wanted to talk to you about was the um, little pump here um, this I just bought on eBay uh, it was around about a hundred odd dollars Australian um, I, I fitted a vacuum gauge to it so I could check you know the vacuum that it is holding and um, it was really quite handy I had to modify a fitting here but that was about it and I added a little um, filter because uh, in my line of work you know with working with boards and, and manufactured stuff uh, it can be dusty and I didn't want that dust going into the pump so I just put a um, this is a an automotive car air uh, fuel filter actually uh, if you can find a, a good air filter that you know can be removed and clean great uh, I wish I could find one but uh, I just use a little fuel filter here attached on with some hose and then um, and I've also used these uh, pneumatic um, airlines and, and fittings but you could use your um, your compressor uh, airline and, and fittings also if you wanted to do it that way into your into your board and, and so on um, so yeah the board material uh, the vacuum pump I have um, done uh, a foot pump as well the foot pump is is actually optional if you didn't want a foot pump then you'd have to keep going backwards and forwards to your your vacuum pump to turn you know on and off I found with the foot pump it's going to be really convenient especially when you, you, you know, you, you're constantly, you know, you're doing a job where you're constantly moving your board on and off, you know, to, to, to router on it or to, to chisel or drill on it, whatever it might be, and you're moving your board on and off the workpiece, this foot pump's going to be really, really handy to just, you know, to, to, to it, it, it uh, diverts the pressure out of here and it comes out of the foot pump itself and gives you access to remove your job put it back on as soon as you take your foot off the foot pump uh, you've got your vacuum again uh, my, my one also is using these um, micro jig clamps I just like this idea I had them in the workshop anyway so I thought this would be a great idea to incorporate that into this design that way um, I like the fact that these um, clamp boards actually just clamp to my workbench I don't and I don't have to have them sitting high or or you know or different levels and this is just nice and nice and low and flat as if I was working on the bench and um, happy days so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and you know, inspired you to, to maybe make some of these um, vacuum clamps there are lots of YouTube videos out there on different designs and so on but um, this was one of the simplest ways I came up with um, with this design and I'm really happy with them I'm going to make a few more of these in my workshop. I'll make some narrower ones as well in the future. But um, yeah, if you liked this video, press like, share and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all the latest videos that I'll be making. So see you in our next video.